Hello traders, Nick Shaheen here looking at PayPal. This is, uh, I'm addressing uh, CNBC's call. Uh, one of the guests, or maybe he's now a staple on Options Action, said he liked PayPal. <clears throat> and they all chimed in and they had reasons why they like it. I don't disagree with what they're saying. I do want to layer on top of it one big, couple big things that they haven't talked about, which could cause people to lose money or chase at the wrong time, in my opinion. So this is by no way a recommendation to do anything. This is I'm just putting my opinion over their opinion, and they think that PayPal is going up. Sorry about the noise if you can hear it. My son is hacking up his truck, putting long travel kit on it, and it involves cutting and welding. So anyway, hopefully you can't hear it. So he, the the idea that PayPal is breaking out is I get it. One of the guys mentioned an inverse head and shoulder, I'd say loosely interpreted, but you can argue that the neckline is somewhere around 108, 109 zone. And the target should be somewhere up here, eyeball. Uh, there's a big open gap up here. This is a 240 uh, minute. Why don't I go to a daily, which is what most any, everybody is used to seeing. And I'll go to a, a year's worth of data here. Okay. So this is a daily chart. I'll reset it. So we know we have a year. Every candle is one day. This is what everybody's used to. Um, so it looks like a breakout. But for me, if I'm not long yet, and the markets are at all-time highs, and this one is and, and Square have been underperforming the big guys, MasterCard and Visa, they're at their all-time highs, the other two. American Express is kind of like a you know halfway in between. So th the idea is to wait out a few candles, and I'll tell you why. In my opinion, uh, I, I lose nothing by waiting out a few can candles. And here is uh, the my hesitation. This candle right there and that candle right here. And this bunch right there. This, this is a prior ledge. And let me mark it up. All right. Sorry about that. It's Friday, the 27th. Long week, uh, the market closed, and I was doing homework. So the idea is that it's in a breakout, arguably from somewhere around here. Uh, they said inverse cup and head, I mean inverse head and shoulders. I don't see it exactly that way, but you could probably draw it somewhere. But it is a bullish neckline breakout, and in, in it it should be up here the target. It usually, tell you is the depth of this that would be the, the the potential, and that would close a few gaps, including this daily gap up here. However, in my opinion, um, I would put an alarm at least to go above Friday's high. That's at least because markets were bullish. The stock was bullish kind of in the beginning. And then they faded and closed um, not at the lows, but not at the highs. So the, at the very least, I will put an alert to exceed at least Friday's high, the 27th high. And But ideally, I want to make sure that I'm not going to fade here and I'm not going to fade here. This is a big reversal. No earnings. Don't know what happened. Uh, big green, big green. Boom. We failed. So this is a, a giant indecision candle and a three-day top. And if I look left, arguably that used to be support. That was the last support. Failed. Came back to it. Failed. So um, <clears throat> came back to it failed even worse right failed so now they're attacking it again why do i believe this time is going to be different okay we have higher lows nice trend i don't doubt they can break through it but why do i want to jump the gun i'd rather miss out on a couple of bucks than to grab well it all depends on how fast i'm trading if i'm trading intraday maybe i want to trade it but that's not the daily candle that i would be watching so, and before that, it used to be R, right? So, resistance, resistance, they broke through it, support, great. Then, whoop, what happened? Came back to it, resistance. So, it is, in fact, resistance until the bulls can prove otherwise. So, how can, how, how can they break out of it? Ideally, if they come to it, if they fail here and they do another one of these, so then the, the range will be even tighter. Let's say they fail down here. And then they broke, break above it, and then they come back to it, and then they go back up. This way they make sure it's footing, and it's not a fake out. So this is the ideal breakout. You get a pinch, uh, higher lows, lower highs, or in this case, re-attacking a neckline. 
Um, here it's even a wedge if you want to consider it this time or a channel. So, but it's attacking a neckline. I believe more in levels than actual trend lines. The trend lines matter, but the levels I bet matters matter more. Like it's an emphatic statement. Okay, so too much noise on it already. So, um, <clears throat> if I were a trader, um, fast trader, and I wanted to, to to be pretty fast, I would at least put an, an alarm here. And it's very easy. I'll just do it that way. It just brings my attention. I did a video today where this popped up on ISRG in the middle of the video. And you can go back and watch it. It may have been the TLT video, Apple video. I can't remember. I did too. Ideally, I want to see the alarm above that. I don't know why it's not doing it. Anyway, it did that to me yesterday. So this is where I would chase with more... Uh, comfort that I don't have I'm not running into a wall here or a little bit higher this was a prior fail here so actually I'm gonna move it I'd rather miss a couple of bucks I don't care I can't trade every trade and I would hate it if I buy it and they hit the wall and they fade and uh, so I would rather do that or I would ch chase it by selling puts or put spreads. Depends on the, um, if, if I'm a trader that knows what they're doing, uh, I don't want to sell puts into an earnings report. This wasn't such a good response in, in the beginning. Uh, do they have a habit of that? I don't know. But, but yeah, this wasn't good. So I'm not poo-pooing their idea. They, they said some good stuff, some r correct stuff. But I'm just saying, if I heard it, I wouldn't just go buy the calls that they were talking about. I don't even remember what they... Oh, and they also mentioned a whole bunch of calls, that they bought the whole bunch of calls. Well, somebody sold those calls. And who's to say that the sellers aren't smarter than the buyers? If I was bearish, I would sell calls against my, my stock, for example. And that's a bearish thing. It means that price is going to run to it and stall. And um, it, it if if having a lot of options is a smart thing, then why do they say that most options expire worthless? So that means everybody does the wrong thing all the time or most of the time. So who's to, why would I want to chase the masses when, in fact, the statistics say that the masses usually lose? So it's not an argument for it. So that is not a reason for me to chase. I've shared the Nigerian's sharing the you know, unusual options activity. I think Lulu, they pushed it twice, if I'm not mistaken. The 230 calls, which were losers, by the time they aired it, it was $2.60, and today it closed $0.10 cents into that call. So not much meat there, right? Even at his entry price, which was $1.30, he lost the premium unless he exited right at 260 when it aired. Not saying he did. I'm just you know guesstimating there. Um, and then the second time, I think it was a 235 or 232 and a half. And they said they're buying them in droves, and they mentioned 5,000 contracts. Well, I also saw that there were 5,000 contracts um, um, for January um, at 2.30. So if I own the 2.30 call and I'm in the money, I would sell the 2.32.5 to lock in my profits or the 2.35. I can't remember what leg it was. So the two numbers match up. So it's not a bullish thing. It's me doing my homework saying, you know what? It's not a thing that's going to get to 2.35. And they were right. So they made money on it. They, the sellers of those calls. So the buyers who chased those calls lost money. So anyway, back to this. The opportunity is there. The breakout may, in fact, have started earlier. If I'm not on board, if I'm on board, I would just ride it. And I will put a stop behind here. If I'm, on if I'm not on board, I wouldn't chase it yet. At least see the, the 27th high break or <clears throat> 110.75 or... 111.50 or 112.40-ish. It all depends on the speed, time frame, size, trader appetite, risk appetite, etc. Portfolio. If I'm long a whole bunch of stuff and banks and MasterCard and Visa, I wouldn't touch this or dump that for this. I wouldn't load up all on the same side. All right. This is a little bit longer than I wanted, but I think it drives the point home. Do the homework after seeing an idea you like.